Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm back with more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. So if you have questions, you can just put them in the comments below. Eric said, Hi Judy, you mentioned a lot of people being on set. Why is that? It seems like a lot of people standing around just watching. Can you tell us who are considered essential crew who needs to be on the set? It is true. The size of a crew can vary depending on the type of shoot that it is. Uh, there can be something like what I'm doing here where it's pretty much just me. I set up my own little camera. I have my little light I set up and that's sort of it. All the sound that you hear is actually being recorded by my iPhone. I don't even have a separate microphone. However, as soon as you step up into things that are more sophisticated than what I'm doing here, you have a lot of other elements that come into play. Uh, so you have the people that are involved in creating the lighting. So that will be your cinematographer who basically crafts the lighting and they are responsible for the look of it. And then they have their various different lighting people, however big that crew is, that actually move the lights and focus the lights and hang the lights and all of that. And they run all the electrical cables and plug them in so that they have the power to the lights that they need. Then you have what we call the grip department and they're responsible for the things that move. If the camera is going to move on a dolly, that is the grip department. If there's something that needs to go in front of a light to help shape it, if, if say they want it to look like there are leaves in front, leaves going by as the car is supposed to be driving, that would be part of the grip department. So you have a number of people involved in that department then there are, there's of course the makeup person and the hair person. So if they need to be on set to be keeping an eye out for anything that's happening with hair and makeup, they might be there. The wardrobe department, uh, they typically don't necessarily need to be standing on set. Uh, there's very few people that actually need to be there exactly when things are filming, but uh, they might be a little further off to the side just in case their department is needed for something but they might step off at times. Uh, there is the sound department. So there will be the um, sound mixer, who's usually a little bit further away and they're listening to all the sound. And then you have the person who's holding the boom mic. And sometimes there's more than one person needed to capture sound. So there might be two mics in place. Uh, so you can have, you know, a number of people involved with the sound department. Then you have the actual camera crew. So you have the person who's the camera operator, and then you will have a first assistant camera person, and they are involved with handling the focus for the camera and a few other aspects of dealing with the camera. And then you have a second assistant camera person, and they're the ones who, you know, deal with the, the uh, sticks that, that uh, have the information, the slate that has the information about the production, the scene number, the take number, and they then have the, you know, that syncs the sound with the, um, with the video, with the film. So you have that team that will be around there. Then you have things like stand-ins. The stand-ins probably won't be standing around when we're actually filming, but they might be because as soon as they call cut and they're going to reset the camera and do go in for a close-up or something, those stand-ins need to be right there uh, to let the actors step out while they move equipment around and then the stand-ins are there so that uh, uh, the actors can step away for a moment, but so that there is someone there for them to focus camera and lights on. And then there's the property department. So anything that we are handling, if it's food, if it's uh, you know a plate, if it's a towel, if it's uh, if we're in the kitchen and and grandma has a mixing bowl, anything like that that we handle is the property department. So they're gonna be within shouting distance in case something's needed. Other crew people involved, uh, there are assistant directors. So they manage all of the logistics of what's going on on set. The first assistant director is right there with the director to uh, make sure that they're coordinating everything that goes on on set and, and keeping things moving along. Second assistant director is usually responsible for gathering up the actors that are needed or anything else that's needed. Sometimes there's an additional uh, second assistant director or production assistant uh, that helps with other 
various things. They collectively, the call sheets and everything are within the assistant director department. So that's how come all of those pieces, a lot of people to, to coordinate the things for each scene that is shot. So not all of them have to be right there, but a number of them do. And then some of them just might be a little further into your periphery, but they're, they're on standby for when they're needed. From Maria, a few questions for you. Did you use a green screen for some of the scenes? Very rarely on the Waltons, uh, because we didn't deal in any particular special effects. I believe they used something in the Ferris wheel when Elizabeth kept having nightmares about falling. I think that was done against a blue screen or green screen, whatever it was they used at the time. But in general, we didn't. And then I spoke recently about working with green screen on like when I did Stargate SG-1. Uh, so I have worked with blue and green screens and on other shows uh, that I have done. So that's always always kind of interesting to do. Um, also, with the recent tragedy with firearms on a movie set, how did the production handle guns? Um, were they real or not real weapons? Uh, we used guns sometimes on the Waltons. The, the men went out hunting. I was never involved in any of those scenes. So exactly what went on with the guns, I'm not sure. Um, how functional those were, I don't really know. They were probably real, but I expect because uh, in a lot of cases they may not have been loaded at all. Um, in more recent years when I have worked on some shows, uh, a Canadian series I worked on called Bluff, we worked with a number of guns as we did on my movie, Nowhere to Hide, where I actually, that was one of the times I actually had to handle one of the guns. Um, and in both cases, we had we had uh, the safety crew. So we had an armorer who dealt with all of the weapons. And then there was always a safety meeting whenever there was going to be guns on set. Everyone would circle up and the person in charge would give the safety briefing and talk about what was going to be happening and walk through it. And, and then any weapon that was going to be used, they'd show it to us. Uh, and we would get to look at it to see that it was not loaded, things like that. So there was many safety precautions taken, the times that I recall particularly being involved with scenes involving weapons. Um, so they definitely, on the things I worked on, really paid attention to that. And then one last question you had, was there a behind the scenes romance between any of the actors? Um. Gosh, uh, not really, not amongst the, the actual cast. Uh, we were so young when we started working together that, um, I mean, I had a crush on Richard Thomas. I had a crush on Eric Scott. I had a crush on, a crush on John Walmsley. So, you know, crushes and things like that, but I never dated any of them. Uh, and I don't think any of the others in the immediate cast ever dated. And of course, there's been, Michael has talked about her relationship with Ralph and how much they really loved each other and they thought about dating, but never really did. Uh, they decided it was better for all the show and everything if they didn't. So there may have been other peripheral uh, dating relationships that I just don't remember, but that's what I know. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons Ask Judy. I'll see you next time for more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.